I'm sorry. So introspection, though, knowing yourself mm -hmm. before you can possibly begin to know other people, looking in yourself mm -hmm. and trying to understand where, where you're going. There is an argument, though, that says that goals are counterproductive and the thing that you want to be working on are the systems to get you there. That's actually a very good point. I get. I actually understand whoever said that, why they said that. Because a lot of times, either you pick the wrong goals or you're focused too much on said goal and not about the micro steps that are going to let you accomplish them. The system thing is actually perfect. That is um, that is probably the chief reason why people don't accomplish a lot of goals or they end up unhappy. It's just like, well, I want to drop 10 pounds. January 1st rolls around. It's like, by February 1st, I'm going to be 10 pounds lighter. It's like, okay, well, how are we going to do that? Are you going to starve yourself? Are you going to go on one of those yo-yo diets? The way that people tend to create lasting change in their lives is to create systems that curtail a lot of the behaviors and the influx of different stimuli that are going to work against achieving that goal. For example, let's lose, uh, let's use the 10 pound example. You can do things like create systems where, all right, I know I go to work. Well, let's say it's a remote worker who's fortunate in that way. I have to sign on to my computer at 9 a.m. I am going to set out my workout clothes at night every day. So as soon as I get up and get ready, let's say they get up like 6.30 and get ready, I'm going to have my clothes staring at me. And it's going to make it that much harder for me to not either go outside and exercise or go to the gym. That's one system you can set up. And when I go shopping every week, I'm going to decide, hmm, am I going to continue to buy ice cream and pizza? Or am I going to start cutting out a lot of these non-fibrous carbs most of the time that I'm not working out? So I'll start loading up on chicken, beef, fish, eggs, bacon. Bacon is always nice, exactly. And I will stop buying as much candy and ice cream. That's another system. If you can't, if it's not in the house to eat, you're not going to eat it. That works too. Accountability system. That's another way you can do a system. It's like, hey, I've got this friend who's into fitness. He plays sports. And I'm going to say, hey, every other week, I want you to ask me how many times I exercised and how many times I ate this sort of food that I'm not supposed to be eating. Like you don't want to, that's another sidebar. You don't want to eliminate foods completely because that will just mentally, that'll screw you up. But you want to get it yourself to a place where most of the time you're eating the right foods that are going to go with your goals. And even that can be in flux depending on what your goals are. But yes, you have this accountability system where this friend will check on you a couple of times a month to ensure that you're doing what needs to be done. So I completely agree with the systems part because a lot of people think, they're going to will themselves to accomplish the goal or right when you first put a goal out there, there's always this jolt of energy inside you. It's universal. You're really excited. It's like, yeah, I'm going to accomplish this. And that's how people feel for the first day or so. But your emotions are capricious. They're going to change from time to time, especially given the circumstance. So you want something that's more solidified and rock that's going to encourage you along the goal. And that's where having good systems comes in so that even when you're not feeling like you got to do something for your goal, that it's going to be harder for you to not do that thing because you have systems in place to act as guardrails. Like in a bowling alley, you have those guardrails for the terrible bowlers who <laughs> just throw the ball in the gutter <laughs> every other roll. <laughs> That's what systems do for you. They act I'll like leave, that guardrail. So I'll leave dents in the, in the thing. Tell you, my kids are better. My kids are nine, nine and 11. They, they're better oh. bowlers than I am. Tell you. <laughs> The, the the nature of the systems, I think, and habit, you're talking about habit here. You're trying to create mm -hmm. habits or yeah. systems that lead to habits. I think there's finite in that if you try and add to what you do, you're kind of destined for failure. Mm -hmm. I think you can replace. Yes. The same as in persuasion. I, mm -hmm. can't, I can't ask you to stop doing something. I can't give you something else to do. Mm -hmm. I can't easily say, well, I'm going to add a task into my day. I can replace, oh, I don't know. I can replace having a bacon sandwich for breakfast by going down the gym. Mm -hmm. now, that's the thing I'm going to do. 
and I'll have one when I come home. Yeah. Or on the way back or something like that, you know, so you can yes. replace, you can, you can swap things and swap, swap them out. I think no, it's understanding that as well. It's, it's quite a good way of dealing with the people around you. Yeah, that's a really good point, Paul, because we only have a limited amount of cognitive resources. So mm. small brain. Yeah. To go back to your stacking example, you can only stack so much. It's much more effective to get rid of some of these pancakes rather than keep adding more of these pancakes. And that's where I help knowing where your goals comes in. It's like, all right, what's really important to me? What needs to be done? And what are some of the things I'm doing now that I can get rid of and replace the things I want? Like I actually myself, I spent some time in the hospital. That's a whole nother long story back in 2018. And one of the things I did while I was laying there just thinking is like, you know what? I need to think about what needs to be done and what I need to get rid of and what sort of people I need to get rid of as well. What things are less important to me and just get an idea of like what's most important will help with that process. Like, all right, like, do I really need to be going to these meetings that I'm kind of just showing FaceTime at and then not, I don't really care what happens? No, I need to do this. Do I need to be participating in this activity that I kind of sort of don't care about? No, get rid of, get rid of. Just like, uh, I can't remember Bruce Lee's quote about, um, I can paraphrase it, about something about getting rid of the essential, the unessential, chopping things away so you can be really good at things that matter most. So I think your point about not adding too much makes so much sense, Paul. 